Hello everyone, Dino Don here with the uh, first real update on the War Corsair project for this year. Uh, turns out this week uh, was a very nice week. Uh, did have a little rain, but it finally got up into the 70s and stayed there. Uh, yesterday and today was uh, well into the 80s, mid 80s. Uh, a little warm, a little humid from the rain we had, but overall it's been a good weekend. <clears throat> so I've been out here all weekend. Uh, last week I reported on uh, I was starting to mess around with the gear doors. Um, started to make some parts and then found out I didn't have the material I needed in aluminum to cut out the cams. So I did get some material in and I did buy some, did get my uh, end mill I needed to cut out these two little pieces here. Now this is the main cam itself, as you can see how it was designed. <clears throat> this is designed to go around the torque tube because you can't get to the torque tube and then this is the clamp. You can see these things are cut halfway through here that's full width 3 8 and then again here you can see the recess cut in that for this cam. So you put the cam on the torque tube, slip that on, slip this on and then just bring them together and then they're drilled for countersink screws and that's the cam and then the cam goes inside this cage assembly alright I got a I got the other one all temporary assembly assembled I can't speak tonight and I've got it clamped up in the vise here so this is the general idea in the aircraft now this is upside down this is the top <clears throat> top and this is the bottom and this is the what's called the torque tube. That's the part that physically rotates that draws the gear up and down into the wheel well. Now this would be facing, let's see, I think it's uh, aft. But it, again, think of it, it's upside down. Now you can see the two little roller bearings in there, top and bottom. Now I've got a short piece of tube in here. Uh, this one was already fitted to the torque tube. Now remember the landing gear is um, coated, uh, powder coated. So it's a little thicker than the tube. This is inch and an eighth tubing. Same thing it's in the plane. So I put a little tape on there to make the difference because this has already been fitted to the torque tube and it goes in tight. So basically what happens is the hydraulic, there's an arm on the torque tube and the hydraulic linkage pulls this thing back and forth. Now this would be as if the gear is in the uh, full down position would be somewhere around here. <clears throat> so this is this way. That lets the uh, gear doors drop open. Now the torque tube rotates this way. And as it rotates, you'll see what it does when it gets to this cam. It's now getting ready to transition. And then that cam comes up. And that's basically full up right there. It stops once it gets to the peak. So there's a half inch of travel right there. And then the gear can, can the torque tube can continue to travel to get the gear all the way down. So the gear has to travel almost all the way up till it gets to here. And then the gear at this point is just a few inches shy of being completely in the wheel well. And then the last bit of travel, the torque tube pushes this up, but the torque tube well, this doesn't move in the airplane, it just turns. This here is what actually goes up and down. So the easiest way to show it is this way. <clears throat> So you can see how that transitions. You can literally roll it all the way around and it'll transition back and forth. But it gives you a half inch and once it's up there it stays up there. Once it's down, it stays down. And like I say, the first 24 degrees, this is the full, like the uh, gears up, doors are closed. That's full up. So the first 24 degrees is like so. And the doors drop open as you can tell by this up and down motion here. <clears throat> and then it can travel the remaining 90 degrees from this position here that'll turn 90 more degrees rough, roughly there. And that would be the full down position. So the 90 degrees it rotates and it just catches the point where it transitions in the last 24 degrees. You can see, the, see how that thing drops as it rotates. Try to rotate it so it's up there, drops half inch. 
That's a half inch a stroke. That's the general idea. And then I made this piece, there's a small hole drilled in there that hooks onto the actual the linkage that pulls the gear up and down. Uh, the problem I see is I made this one and it's actually, the gear doors were hung wide open and I mounted and located the uh, hole for that. And then when I tried to bring it up, I was just manually turning this. It wasn't uh, tightened onto the tube yet to get the gear doors to operate. <clears throat> and I found out that when it was all the way up on the high side of the cam like that, it uh, wasn't enough. Uh, the doors were still open a good inch and a half. So that hole needs to be farther down. So what I'm going to need to do is uh, this piece I'm going to, this is just a test piece. Uh, I may go to quarter inch thick stuff. Um, and then the other problem I have is the gear when it comes up, the, the physical landing gear comes real close to this and it may end up hitting this if I keep this right centered. So I can move it off to the right or left. There's a pocketed area in the gear torque tube because there's two rods, two tubes that come out straight from here. One here and one here. So it fits perfect in the middle, but I think the landing gear strut itself is going to touch this because that thing comes down and comes very close. The strut comes closer than a half inch. I mean, I got over a half inch here, so I don't think it's going to clear. The gear swings up, you know, swings back and chunk sits right here. So it's not going to clear. But if I move this, the gear over center here, and put this either on left or right of the strut when it comes up, then it'll work. But I'm in a much smaller confined spot because there's a diagonal brace that comes across here and matches to this one. So it's a smaller area. It'll still work, but it's tight. Uh, it's going to take some moving these around, flipping them around to get it in the right configuration. But this piece needs to be adjustable. This hole has to be able to move up and down about a quarter of an inch so I can fine tune the gear up and down. But that's the basic idea of what I was trying to explain last week, if it helps to understand. So it's a nice little mechanism. It should work just fine. I may end up <coughs> redoing these. Uh, the plastic one's not bad, but this aluminum one, for some reason, has a little more clearance in it here, back in here in the cutout, in the window. <coughs> it's kind of hard to see, but there's just a little more clearance there where this thing can rock. So. But again, that was just a, a trial fit to see what was going to work. This would have been perfect because that's basically center line, but the gear is going to hit it. So it's got to be more offset. Um, but what I'll probably end up doing is machining, because I've got some 4 inch wide, quarter inch thick, that I can machine this across and then finish another little straight tab and slot it and two screws and screw it together and find adjusted or something similar to that. But uh, these cams, they turned out very nice, worked real well. So that's pretty much all I was able to get accomplished this weekend. Again, uh, <laughs> the tool for cutting out this little pocket, the end mill, didn't show up till after 12 o'clock yesterday, Saturday. So I wasn't able to make these pieces until in the afternoon. The little smaller ones, I was able to cut those out just fine. Uh, the first one I did, it was didn't want to go in. I had to do a lot of uh, fine sanding on this piece to get it to mat in. So I adjusted the cut program, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, enlarged this passage a little bit. The next one fit really good. The only thing it didn't fit is is here. It was still a little tight on these corners, so it took some massaging to get them in. And then you can see I just put them on a sandpaper and sanded them nice and smooth. But they did overlap just sweet, real nice. So, and again, <clears throat> so that's where I'm at. Um, like I said, up inside this thing is get down here and kind of give you an idea of what's going on. Uh, it might be a little dark under here without any light. I've actually, got the light right here. Give me a second. Okay, this is the torque tube. You can see where I had it fitted there. And these are the smaller areas. It'll still fit in here. It'll still fit in here. But the linkage that it actually has to hit on is right there. And that screw. That's the screw it's got to catch. So let me see if this light can get over a little better light. 
got to catch that. So there's not much room, and we're only talking from this tube to here is only an inch. So I only got three quarters of an inch from there to here to play with. So it's uh, just trial and error until I get it right. But it, it'll work. Uh, again, what happens is when this gear goes up, this area right here on this side, because this gear, the tire swings around this way and lays flat. So that spot will literally come up and just about touch this. And that thing, gear mechanism is going to hang down about that far. So uh, these are the toggle. This is the torque tube. And this is a scissor joint. So when this tube rotates, it rotates up that way. This joint here, right here, goes straight up in. So this thing folds like that. This one folds like that. Pulls the gear right up in tight. So that's where I'm at. And I got to do a little clearance in here so I can get the bolt back into this thing. Finish it up. So uh, the other side, same way, same problem. But they're all hooked up. So here's a chunk of... That's a chunk of, uh, must have hit the uh, zoom, huh? Sorry about that. But that's four inch, quarter inch thick. I can get one piece out of that. Like I said, it's kind of drawing a sketch here of the idea. This is where it's got a hook up to. So somewhere in here, it needs to be two pieces to adjust this vertical. So, <laughs> let me get this light. Come on, off, there we go. All right, that's going to be the short but sweet update for this week. Thing was outside, poplar seeds are flying. Uh, so I still got to pull that tank and touch up some paint. And But that's kind of one of the big setbacks right now is getting that finished. And then once that's in, and I uh, hang this up and do a gear swing and get everything adjusted, and then I got to cut out the little gear door that, attaches here, kind of attaches here, comes down. Um, and then those will be done. Tail wheel just needs to be basically tested and rigged, make sure the doors close okay on that. Close up that little thing. I did get me a piece of aluminum to make the uh, trim tab for the elevator. It's in the house. This aluminum is for making the front gear doors, for making the covers for the bottom of the wing openings here where you can access the hardware pull the wing off. There's a, about a four inch wide cover, three foot long, both sides. And I got enough to make a frame around the windshield bow out of aluminum as well. So, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and cut this video off here. Again, uh, as always, appreciate everyone taking the time to watch these videos. Uh, hope they're informative. And hopefully by next week I'll have this thing figured out and back up and running. So it took a while. I mean, it's trial and error, but the idea is going to work. It's going to work just fine. Okay, folks, that's going to do it for this week. As always, feel free to leave any comments, questions, or concerns. Answer them as they come through. Appreciate everyone uh, taking the time to watch them again and, and to make the comments. So, all right, this week's update is done. I'll uh, catch you again next week, folks. So for now, this is uh, Dino Don out.